Welcome back for game two, where Gambit Esports from the CIS and G-Rex from the LMS are going to go head to head. Let's go ahead and take a look at the players loading onto the rift now. On the blue side, it's Gambit Esports. PVP Steos in the top lane, Diamond Prox in the jungle, Kira at mid, Lodic and Edward bot and support respectively, and Coach at remains. And I think that this lineup that comes out of the CIS is such an interesting lineup. You know, the story that we're telling at MSI is the three generations of players that they have. You know, they have the living legends in Edward, in Diamond, these guys that absolutely changed the way that their role was played. Yeah. Then they have Stehos and Kira, the mainstays that have been there since the inception of the CIS. You know, you bring in Lodek now, the young AD carry, and I think that their experience really did come through well, and I think that they were a little bit unfortunate to bump into the Flash Wolves. You know, Flash Wolves looked yeah. great at MSI. This is a team that can do damage, has a lot of international success, has a lot of domestic success. And I think on the right day, they can actually challenge a lot of the top teams. Well, they've definitely got their opportunity here in Group D at Worlds. It's anybody's game. Yeah, it certainly is. Facing them on the red side it is going to be G-Rex. In the top lane, it is PK. Empty will be starting in the jungle position. Candy in the mid lane. And Stitch and Koala, an animal I am very familiar with from Australia. And, of course, their coach <laughs> is Way. This is a team that brand new to the LMS. Raz said it best, you know, this is the first year that we've been able to see them. And I think the exciting thing about G-Rex is that the first and second seeds have always done well at uh, Worlds from the LMS, but this is the first time we're going to see that third seed try and push through, try and have a successful run. And this is a team that has been through some turbulations already, you know, very good opening split that was sitting first for the majority of it, weren't able to get through the final split two. Poor form, experimented with their roster a lot. And I think coming into this, they do need to be able to grasp onto what they did in that final game of the Gauntlet versus J Team. Empty played control jungle very well. And once again, I want to see a slow game come through from this lineup as they just try and scale into their team fights. And you talked about how this lineup on the side of Gambit has historic players involved in it. Across the Rift, it's no different story being told. You look at G-Rex, this is a team led by Toys, who, for those of you who weren't around back in the day, Season 2 World Champion is now part of the team, making sure that they're doing what they need to be doing. One of the guys making sure that they have the game plan that can make them find the win here. You're trying to get them to be that third seed that can really say, hey, LMS isn't just the top two teams, the rest of the league stepping up as well. Yeah, absolutely. And no stranger to being an underdog, right? TPA came into that tournament. They had had some success beforehand. People thought that they were going to be good. No one really thought they were going to be able to take it to Zubu Frost. And the fact that, you know, able to win mirror matchups against people like Rapid Star back then, who was an absolute god in his own right. I mean, Toys certainly has a storied history himself. They've also got some players that are journeymen. I mean, Bebe was... Uh, on EDG, ADG, he's starting on the bench, but he's their jungler. Stitch, of course, also played it in the LPL, played for unlimited potential of all teams back in like 2015 when I started casting the LPL. So they've got some people that've been around, but the big thing is that these guys have no experience on the international stage. They have right. one tournament, Riff Rivals, they went 0-3, weren't able to pick up a game, played against EDG, a freak of freaks, I think, and, a, and another team, and you know, it just did not look pretty for the LMS lineup. And honestly, experience, is one of the things that stands out for Gambit in particular. Again, going back to what you were talking about, you got some players that have been around for a long time on this squad, and it's one of the things that seemingly brings them some of the victories that they find, even if they fall behind. They're a team that can staunch the bleeding. They're a team that can make sure that if they have a bad early game, if mid game's not going their way, they're not going to allow their opponents to snowball that as easily as they might against other teams, and they can find those comeback routes. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that Raz hit on it really well, and I think one of the big keys to why they can do that is their preparation when it is good lends a lot of weight. They had the laser from the sky comp with the Nocturne. You could see that was something they were very proud practiced on. When you do have veterans, you know that the meta is cyclical. You kind of know what beats what and what you need to be able to play in these matchups. And I think that the thing that impressed me about Gambit is that they are willing to draw back into pocket picks. They're willing yeah. to change up how the map's going to play. They're willing to play fast. They're willing to play slow. They do give a lot of priority to Diamond Prox, to Edward to be able to be those playmakers. And I think that that's only going to be a boon in a stage where, you know, people will be nervous. People will be trying to win those games where overstepping could potentially be punished. All right, you can see now we're getting into the team intros back in Lal Park in Korea. And I 
think as the players come onto the stage, this is going to be one of those moments for G-Rex to take a big breath, you know, coming into this live crowd, checking out the new venue where the LCK is going to be held next year. I mean, it would be getting very real that they only have the four games during groups to make it to the best yeah. of five. And they proved during split one regular season that they can be consistent. I mean, However, Split 2 was anything but consistent, and I think a lot of it was to do to their lineup. You know, they were playing with three different junglers, two different AD carries. Did they want to play, you know, the weird snowball he comps? Did they want to play Gragas and Skana only in the jungle was pretty much what they ended up on. And I think that I, I hope for this lineup's sake that they have gone away and they've done a lot of preparation into what their style is and sticking to it. Because I think we've seen lineups like you know, the Cloud Nines, the Gambits on your screen right now, that when they play their style of League of Legends can make it work. And there's not a lot of time to make large corrections. If you come into this with a strategy, things go okay, there's a couple hiccups, and you can say, all right, this is what we should correct, this is what's good, this is what wasn't so good, that's fine. If you come into this, game one is absolutely not what you wanted, and you try to completely pull a 180, four games is not often going to be enough time to pull that off successfully. Yeah, and player to watch for this game, in my mind, is empty. He played five games during the second split. Only five. Bebe played about 17. Other jungler uh, Ray's played, I think, somewhere around the 20 mark, 24, somewhere around there. So I think that Empty is going to have a lot of pressure on him. There's a reason they're not playing Bebe. He's a little bit more aggressive. Empty will play the things like Skana, the things like Gragas and Sejuani. And I want to just see whether the lineup of G-Rex can rally around him. Because he's going against one of the best of all time in his role. Cannot understate that enough. Diamond Prox is a god of the jungle. I still remember watching back in Season 2 in the Moscow Five days when he was on the Shivana, just completely showing everybody what counter jungling is and how to play this way of League of Legends that everyone hadn't really thought about too much yet. And we'll see if Gambit Esports can make the run here at Worlds. Like you said, their MSI run was cut short by the Flash Wolves. This time around, their destiny back in their own hands going up against G-Rex here. The bans in the first phase are going to be Varus, Olaf, and Aatrox on the side of Gambit. G-Rex responding with Kaisa, Zaya, and Akali. And for the CIS region, Albus Nox Luna put them on the map. And since then, since 2016, they have been struggling to get back to what they think the limit of their potential is. For players like Kira, Diamond, Stehos, and Edward, that's even more important because watching your rivals do it would hurt. Oh, absolutely. You don't want to be the one left behind. You want to get out there and make your own statement. And what better way to make a statement than with the champion that you most often play for Diamond Prox, that is the Gragas. I mean, the other interesting thing, by the way, it is also the most played champion, well, tied for the most played champion, with PvP Steos. Yeah. That could go either top lane or jungle. Four plays in the top lane in summer, eight plays in the jungle. Gambit definitely got their value pick here. Well, before they bought Diamond Prox onto the line, Stehos was actually Kira's jungler. And he was a really good Gragas player back then as well. So that doesn't surprise me at all. Picking up the Urgot for PK, big pick. This guy during the uh, gauntlet, the regional gauntlet to make it here, was popping off on the Urgot. He had some of the coolest ultimates, flashing over Raptor pit walls, getting three-man fears, really think it is one of the strong champions. And I, I, I mean, it's the best top laner on the patch right now, in my opinion. So Very looking strong. to see him try and take it. Well, it's also Alistar picked up on the side of G-Rex. And I'm talking about a lot of plays on Gragas for Gambit Esports. Well, G-Rex has 10 Alistar games on their support over the course of Summer Split. So he's definitely got plenty of experience on that champion. Gambit deciding they're going to grab their own AD carry in the bottom lane. We did see three different AD carry bans between the two teams in that first phase. So they want to make sure that pool doesn't get pitched any further, grabbing the Tristana as well as Orn to go up against that Urgot. Yeah, and I mean, this draft so far makes a lot of sense, maybe with the exception of Tristana. Haven't seen a lot of Tristana. Is a big hyper carry for Lodic, so see how well he is able to play that. I think picking up the Skana because of the fact that, you know, jungle already there for Gambit Espot. Want to be able to mirror that so your newest player in empty doesn't get pinched all that much. Uh, I think that both teams would be happy with where they're at right now. I get to cast the first Skarner of Worlds 2018. I am happy, man. G-Rex making sure they at least fulfill one commentator's dream as Skarner's locked in as the jungler for them. Gambit getting the Orn means that obviously the Gragas is going to be in the jungle. So that's the Skarner versus Gragas matchup. 
We'll see how the rest of the draft plays out now as the Shen will be banned away by G-Rex. Gambit saying, hey, AD carry pool has already been hit pretty hard. You still don't have an AD carry. Let's hit it harder, taking out the Ash. And I wonder what Stitch has, you know, whether it is something like a Swain that can be picked up into that bottom lane, not something that we've seen all that much of. Obviously still have some physical damage that's going to be coming out of the Urgot in the top lane. So is the potential to play it? A very hard lane bully. We've already mentioned the fact that Lucian seems to have a very high priority for some of these teams at Worlds, where I hadn't really seen it be played to all that much success. Ezreal Jin, also a couple of picks that, you know, potentially if you start really digging down into the playbook that you can start pulling up <laughs> out of the bag Just if you have to. in the bottom of the barrel, but hey, Vayne, a champion that did receive some recent buffs, cycling through a couple different AD carries now, Callista. Now, Callista Alistar is one of the deadliest bowling balls that you can throw in the bottom lane, but she's been out of the meta for a hot minute now. See if G-Rex actually wants to go with this one, and they will lock it in. And that's super interesting, because Callista has historically been one of those champions that if you don't blow her up, she just takes over team fights. However, when you got things like Orn, Gragas, whilst it's not guaranteed CC, if you start missing those ultimates, something's gone wrong uh, throughout the course of the team fight. So as long as there is, you know, some kind of threat coming out of Kira, I think they should be able to deal with Stitch here. It's going to be a very early QSS that has to come out, and I think that you know, an interesting pick, probably due to the fact of how far it's been pitched down. And you know, Alistar is hard enough to kill already. The ultimate obviously makes him very durable. The champion's a phenomenal initiator. But Callista is also notorious for just having the ability to save the support yep. with the ultimate. And once she hit level six, it'll be very hard to kill off Koala as the Thresh is locked in for Gambit. The response to that support, that playmaker in the bottom lane of the Alistar, means they're going to grab a playmaker of their own as mid lane is the last one to be locked in, and it will be the Malzahar for Kira. Yeah, and I mean, that does fit the wheelhouse of Kira. You know, big rise player, but below that, plays things like the Swain, things like the Galio, a lot of wave clear, a lot of control. He is a farming machine. This guy will put up ridiculous farming stats. And I think the fact that it also gives some lockdown for Diamond to be able to play around when that level six hits, you know, going to be certainly a lane that they can pressure Candy in, who was prone to make some brain fades. You know, flashing after LeBlanc clones, having a couple of really rough dives coming out in the regional qualifier for G-Rex. Someone that can be affected by pressure from what I have seen so far in this team's gameplay. Well, this game, I expect to see inventories fall victim to the Malzahar and Skarner tax. You've got suppression on both sides. Purple champions and suppressions go pretty well together, <laughs> and that could be problematic for the carries on either side. I mean, your Malzahar, your Tristana gets pulled in. Those are your only real damage sets. You've got two tanks in the top side in the jungle. Obviously, the Gragas does have a bit more damage these days than what he used to be with the pure tank Cinderhulk build, but you're still not relying on Gragas damage to carry a team fight. Meanwhile, you've got Syndra going up against Gragas and Orn and Thresh. There is a lot of pick potential there. Yeah, I actually think the person that's going to have to pay the tax the earliest, you know, maybe apart from Callista, is going to be the Skana. Because if you're the Skana and you're trying to run past Gragas, Orn, Thresh, and Demelzahar, yeah. Like, you're not getting anywhere in a hurry. That champion's biggest weakness is no gap closer on someone that has to be able to get access to one of the carries to really be made successful. Uh, this could be potentially a difficult game for Empty to be able to navigate. And as I said, not for potentially the right reasons, he is probably the member of this G-Rex lineup that is going to be under the biggest microscope just because they left Raze in the LMS to bring Empty as well as Bebe. This, the first game here in Group D. Group C's first game was pretty impressive showing from Cloud9. Both these teams would love to come out, have that equally impressive first game, really set themselves up to be the team to beat in this group. Remember that each group does have three teams in it, two of which get to go on to the knockout stage, one of which will not. And Group D is also the group that does not have one of the big, like, main region teams in there. You don't have a team from EU, from China, from NA. So considering that, that means that if you get second seed in this group and those other three teams win their groups, as a lot of people are expecting them to do, you've got to go up against one of those bigger regions. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially if you're G-Rex here, the goal is to get first because you do yes. not want to get knocked out at this stage of the tournament. I think Gambit, especially after how they treated the bummer of the Flash Wolves pick at MSI, 
would just be dreading the fact that a second might not be good enough in this situation. And the journey really does have to start now for them. They came out swinging at MSI play-ins. I was super impressed by how prepared they were. We haven't seen competitive LOL for a couple of patches now. Really want to see if they've got anything interesting in store for us in the next couple of matches. Absolutely. Nobody's getting into anything too interesting in the first level here. Looks like everyone will be content just taking those defensive positions and securing some Skarner Spires. Empty will be starting up here at his own blue buff. Same thing can be said there for Diamond Crocs. And a little bit of a different start here. I mean, double blue buff starts coming through for the junglers. We saw double red buffs both uh, last game. So I think it maybe lends itself to how well of a farmer, ooh, some damage, how well of a farmer Skarner is in the early game. Want to be able to just spam out that Q, want to be able to control your Spires. Well, the nice part about Skarner is you essentially have unlimited mana as long as you are in the Spire. There's no way you can actually run out of it, but getting the blue buff down also means that you're going to be clearing the red buff later, so you have more time to utilize that for your ganks. Ah, uh, famous level 4 Skarner ganks that we always yes. hear about. You they're know? fantastic, let me tell you. No, they're not. They have to be so far behind the opponent. I think that the reason we're seeing Skarner come back in to the meta is just how easily he is clearing the jungle at the moment, and the fact that he is still impactful at that level 6 mark, you know, the electrocute nerf certainly helped him out a little bit because all of yeah. a sudden he's not getting blown up in those 1v1 situations. Yeah. <laughs> if you engage onto Skana and he doesn't die, the little bugger does like a surprising amount of he damage. Does a lot he of just damage. starts wiggling at you and swinging his claws, and yeah, he really hurts. People underestimate how much damage you can do when you get such an amazing cooldown reduction by using the Q on enemy champions. Did you know that Skarner with 40% CDR? If you're using your Q on enemy champions, if you auto attack an enemy once, it has a 0.5 second cooldown. Yeah. You just spam that out like crazy. That's a very deadly scorpion. That is not somebody you want to mess with. But right now, Candy is not somebody you want to mess with in the mid lane here either. Has a lot of lane control super early on. Here is half HP, no mana, and just stuck under the turret. Yeah, if you can't bounce some Malefic Vision, you're going to go ooh, super early in this matchup. We've also seen Candy just continually destroy the Void Links, and Fury needs to be careful here. Nearly in lethal range, and we'll have to take a very ugly shot with 13 CS. Yeah, that's not one that you want to really be taking. 487 gold in the inventory, so not a whole lot you can buy with that. Just a single component, maybe some potions. And it looks like he is going to go with the Mana Crystal into the refillable, right back into lane he goes. Now the Syndra goes back, does grab the Dark Seal to enhance the Corrupting Pot, as well as Boots 1. Yeah, and that's what I would have expected to come out of Kira, uh, to be perfectly honest. Like, I would have liked to have seen the Dark Seal, as well as the refillable, try and regain some semblance of control here. However, going with Mana Crystal, I mean, probably helps a little bit more of the yeah. immediate problems, but you can just kind of see the mindset already of the experienced Gambit mid laner is getting bullied around, needs that level 6 to be able to turn the tide of this lane. Bottom side, you can see that Stitch has the Sentinel set up for the Callista, making sure that it keeps an extra eye on the jungle in case Diamond Prox wants to make a move towards this bottom lane. And looks like it's going to be two versus two for now. Diamond Prox are going to come in there as well. Edward taken down to half HP, but it will not go any further. Even though Gambit had the extra body down there, the fact that they went in early and lost that even fight means that it's Edward who walks away the most hurt. Yeah, I mean, Edward did what, you know, a lot of Thresh players do, just walked at them, got the double play. It looked like it was going perfectly. However, just the return damage that came out and the mobility of Stitch to just continue this pressure underneath the turret is going to be pretty oppressive. And the hook going high wide, not what they were really looking for. And Edward waste, uh, sorry, Diamond wasting a lot of time down there. Also, pr probably lucky to not get his back reset. G-Rex looking like they have a good level of control right now on the map. And both junglers have also gone back and found their critical first buy. For Predator junglers, it's huge because it gives you the boot. It gives you access to your keystone. Yeah. Without that level one boot, you don't have one. As bottom side, it's Spears being thrown into Lodic there. As Stitch continues to maintain this lane control. Pretty low on mana, though, so just going to keep farming up, keep those guys away from this bottom lane. And for GRX, remember, this is a team that their regular season was bad. okay. It was huh. wishy-washy to bad. Yeah, it was, they, I mean, they finished fifth. Right. For a team that goes to Worlds, that, that's not a good regular yeah. season. Yeah, fifth, it's, I mean, you're not at the very bottom, but you're not exactly singing your own praises and yeah. writing songs about how good you did. 
At the same time, once they got into regional qualifiers, they had a much better showing. They were first in a lot of metrics of all the teams that were competing there in terms of how we measure how good you were doing. And this is a team that you would hope then could use some of that momentum coming here into the play-in stage. Yeah, completely agree. And I think that the big thing that changed for them was the more consistent approach to jungling, the less risk-taking. Uh, we saw a lot of the time that exactly this was happening in the regional qualifiers, that they were just organically winning lanes, pushing in, allowing Empty the freedom to be able to invade when he wanted. They've got CS leads across the board. That's going to lead to pressure and Diamond Proc to have to start taking more aggressive routes throughout the jungle and looking to relieve that pressure. And if you just stay with three pushing lanes, yeah. more often than not, the enemy team will crack eventually and start trying to look for those plays. And I find it interesting that G-Rex is winning all three lanes right now in terms of looking at the farm and sort of where they've been because Gambit is a team that has had Kira, Steos, and Lodic all be the carry before. These guys all have big carry potential, but so far they're all losing their lanes. And to be able to shut down all three of those weapons early on like this is good for Chief. Yeah, it certainly is in saying that the tide should start turning. You know, all of a sudden you got access to Stehos's ultimate in the top lane. Kira's got his as well. As soon as Diamond can join that party, as soon as you got the top side of the map with the level sixes, if Stehos gets any priority go. up there, he's going to be able to just walk mid lane and start pegging ultimates at Candy, who Syndra not necessarily known for her high mobility. No, not really. Susceptible to some of these gangs. Has a little bit of trouble on that one as Diamond Prox shows up here into the bottom lane, wanting to set something up yet again. Remember, he did pay a visit here earlier, but it didn't work out too well. All solo laners and junglers have ultimates right now, ready to go. You'll see Empty set himself up there on his Spire, making sure they've got control over that one. Kira just going to knock the shield off of him there as the Sentinel will continue just maintaining control, vision over this bottom side of the river. Both teams, you can tell, want to make something happen down here, but it's sort of a game of chicken. Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, they're just continually looking to unlock Edward on this Thresh. They need to start getting potentially some ganks rolling down here for this peak to really pay off. Historically, one of Edward's biggest champions. But I think Empty has really read this playbook. They know that they can't take down the Urgot top lane, so really there is only a play mid or bot, and he's just doing a very good job of hovering between these two lanes, and the control is certainly there. G-Rex recognizing how much control they have over the lane, and the fact that you've got the Kalista level 6. I talked about this a little bit during Champion Select, but this is so powerful, because you can walk forward and check wards like that. Yeah. Just throw Alistar in front, have him smack the thing, and if he gets in trouble, whoop, you pull him out. No big deal. Yeah, it's certainly a very frustrating lane to play against. And I think that so far the navigation has been a bit risky. This could be an all-in. Putting some good damage there down onto Steos, but Orn's tanky enough to get himself out of that one. Remember, you're going to be executed if you fall below 25% and Urgot can hit the ultimate. Candy finding a little bit of damage down onto Kira there, but Diamond Prox hovering around this one has popped the Predator. You can see Empty with a Predator of his own. Both these junglers looking to fight. Stun comes out. There's your pull as well. Empty dragging it back. More Chain CC going to be popped off. Damage going through. Diamond Prox getting himself away, but it's Koala with the Ignite and the Flash to secure the kill. That is such a cute play coming out of this Ghana <laughs> right there. Able to read Diamond Prox again like a book. Diamond wanted to go bottom. All of a sudden, Empty's down there, big fall. See if we can find the hook there, and there it is. That's the ability of Kalista to shut down playmaking. Yeah, it certainly is, and uh, that's going to be a teleport expended into the bottom lane by Kira as well. Koala back in on a water. He's going to have to get the heck out of dodge. But you've got to applaud Empty. He has been at every gank situation that Diamond is looking for. And at the top of the show, you know, shocks, marks, Raz, they were talking about the fact that this guy on your screen that's about to get picked up and killed is the catalyst for all of the plays. So if you're just able to track him around, if you're able to ensure that he is not having any major effect, it's going to go a long way to beating Gambit. And he did a really good job there, smiting the big chicken to get enough health to force both summoners out of the enemy support. Otherwise, he wouldn't have lived. But it still wasn't enough. Sometimes they just bring too many people to the party, and there's no way to get away from it. It was a good move there from G-Rex, who are now one and a half thousand gold in the lead, despite only having the gold from a single first blood plus assist under their belts. And that's because of the farm spawn. Look at this, 10 CS in the top lane. You've got about 10 CS in the jungle, 20 in mid and bottom lane. They're just outlaning their opponents. And 
I, I said to Raz, you know, I've watched G-Rex play. I actually have a little bit of a crush on the LMS as a region. I really enjoy how they go about League of Legends, always have. As you said, Raz, you need to start pointing out some positives of this team because I'm, I'm a skeptic after watching them play in Split 2. And he said their individual players are still good enough. If they bring the game plan, they will start winning games because individually, this is a team that can stand up. And I think that that's what we're seeing right now. Isolated laning phase, track diamond around with the Skana and just a crew lead and it's working a trick. Looks like Gambit have decided, all right, this isolated landing phase isn't working so much. Let's get the boys together. Let's have a party in the Drake pit. Grab ourselves that Infernal Dragon. Get some more bonus damage stats. Thanks to the whole team picking that one up. G-Rex will not be there in time to contest it, and that is free objective going the way of Gambit. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, the one thing that no one really talks about with Infernal Drakes, they're only good if the game goes long enough. Because they're a percentage. They don't do much early. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So six percent like, of seventy damage is four damage. Yeah, it's not all that much. And G Rex is looking at that one, and they're saying, you know what? We could potentially teleport in. We could look for the big play. But ultimately, they've got themselves an all, and they've got themselves a Melzaha. Why would we risk it when we're already on track to be able to close this game out before that trait means nothing? You know, potentially going to be another one coming up as well. So I like the patience shown there. Candy will continue pushing up here in this mid lane. It's top side. It's DK just having no concern for this Ornn whatsoever. Stales decides to try to go in, try to flex those muscles a little bit, force out a fight. It ends up immediately turning right back on him as the three-man invade from G-Rex, clearing out some vision, placing down some of their own. They want to make sure if there's a rotation, they're on top of it. They can see what's going on there. Diamond Prox still hanging around down towards his bottom lane as this should be... Continued control over the area for G-Rex. Kira could be in some trouble here. Empty goes to the flash, into the pull, into the damage, into the ult, into the kill! And Empty sets up the second. That is just so well played. Immediate suppression, but the impressive thing is that Candy uses the ult first to get the orbs out for the follow-up stun. With two members, always going to be enough damage in Kira. Just having a nightmare of an early game. Diamond about to join him. Diamond's going towards it. Koala. Not a place you want to be. He showed. <laughs> Why he stepped he out of the brush just for a second. I didn't know if that was a spectator thing or if that actually appeared, but either way, not not a good situation for Must Gambit. have seen like yeah. a eucalyptus leave or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's some sort of tricky, <laughs> some sort of tricky situation happening here. I don't want anything to do with this. Gets the hell out of town as PK just continues controlling things here on the top side. Has the black cleaver, which of course does a good job shredding the armor that Steos is trying to build. Is going for what appears to be the full-on frozen heart first and foremost, shuts down some of the attack speed from the Urgot, from the Callista, and from the Skarner. Yeah, interesting, because normally when we see unskilled Spellbook picked up, we see maybe the more aggressive Iceborne Gauntlet coming out, potentially going to look to, you know, combo with Diamond Cross. So much CC, if you have a little bit of damage, you're going to be able to take the Urgot down, but certainly not what they're going for. And I think that now, Gambit are just like, okay, let's scale. You know, we're yep. now a three and a half item comp. We're going to try and slow the pace of the game down. We've got ourselves the Drake already. If we can just stretch this game, look for little objectives, look to just start picking up, you know, maybe a lane swap comes in. Maybe you try and use that Tristana to push down a turret and just yeah. start opening up the map. You know, they, they can be happy. They're only two and a half thousand gold down and they do have a very good late game carry. And this is a great chance to go back to what I talked about just for a second in Champion Select about how this is a team that uses the experience that they've got on themselves to staunch the bleeding when they're behind. Yep. 14 and a half minutes into the game, we're pulling into mid-game now. And when you are down 2,000 gold come the mid-game, being able to make sure that doesn't balloon into 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 gold deficit is very important. And for Gambit, that's the goal. Make sure that they don't get further and further and further ahead as once again, we're just watching Edwards sweep out some wards here in the bottom lane. Keep the vision out of your jungle, right? Make sure they can't comfortably move up and try to collapse on your rotations. Well, the disaster zone right now would be if there is a teleport play into the bottom lane, you know, they take another two kills. They start pushing down your turrets. They open up the map. This 2,000 gold becomes a 5,000 gold lead. Then all of a sudden this game is beyond repair. So they do have to take the slow approach. They just need to stem that bleeding. They need to point the on damage abilities towards the creep wave so it actually does some damage on them that would be great uh, <laughs> as uh, Kira again oh you could be in some trouble they pop the shield not able to find the slow after but PK with the rotation really nice roam out of the top lane you know I thought it was going to be Stahus looking for those but instead it's going to be PK with all of the priority 
and, and we just keep going back to it. Kira burning flash. That means the next gank is going to be more successful. Steos in some trouble here. Steos trying to get away from this Urgot. Doesn't want anything to do with this one any longer. Empty wanted to chase after him, but without the flash available to go over the wall and follow the blast cone, that is not going to be a kill here today, but it is control over the area. And you just talked about lane priority. Let's talk about river priority. Let's talk about Rift Heralds, because that's what G-Rex is talking about right now. Yeah, and I think that the reason that G-Rex are bringing up their bottom lane, they're trying to open up the map. They know that the scaling is going to be there. So this time, they're confident. They've got their first couple of items. Koala in some trouble. Oh, it's going to be a big team fight, though. Koala going in. Look at to start things off. Damage already coming down edward exploded diamond prox now tanking up everyone has to flash himself out of that one to stay alive g-rex goes one for zero in the fight you can't pour your damage into alistar yeah exactly right i mean i thought he was going to be picked off there i thought you know potentially just gets grabbed by kira award goes into the brush but instead they face check the alistar four man pole and top lane now they're going to be able to take the turret Stayos heals to get away but that's not really what you're looking for can't heal the turret that, that thing's going down. That's a pile of rubble. G-Rex are going to grab themselves not only the kill they already got, they're going to grab themselves first turret of the game. They've got three and a half thousand gold lead. They've got Rift Herald on their jungler. Things are coming up G-Rex time and time and time again because of plays like this. Yeah, and you know, I was like, okay, ward over the brush. They're just going to grab him and he's going to go down. But that's not what happened at all. Four-man pulverize as he flashes forward. Decisive play. The Rift Herald's already dead, Gambit. What are you fighting for? This is one of those games where we said, staunch the bleeding. Don't give anything back to them. They go for the risky play. They go for the contest. Now Rift Herald first turret. All of it is gone. And G-Rex are just like, yeah, this is where the game should be. We're now very confident. Sound the Orn Horn. Looking to go after Stitch here. Nice flash. Got himself away from that one as Koala's going to run interference. Looking to keep him out of the way Ooh. yet again. Stitch has the fancy feet. He gets himself out of the way yet again. Edward's going to be thrown backwards. He's looking to grab the kill onto him. PK makes it happen. Still going to be on the front line there with the Urgot. Suppression goes down on the candy behind enemy lines. But now, Kira, you're alone, man. This is not the place to be. Candy cashes in, and G-Rex, two more kills. And time and time again, Gambit are like, this is the play that we're looking for, and they realize halfway through it certainly is not. G-Rex punishing them for sticking their hand in the cookie jar. And you can just see how confident this lineup is right now. They did the hard yards at the start of the game. Now all of it is paying off, and they've got leads everywhere. Another one just popped up in the bottom lane as Shelly used herself as a human, well, void thing wrecking ball to take that one down. <laughs> PK moving up through the enemy jungle. No concern whatsoever for what's going on right here. Steo's trying to get himself away, but Empty decides they're going to bring Diamond Prox right back into the rest of the boys. Candy barely escaping from that one, accidentally taking the turret aggro as Lodic does manage to pick up the kill onto Stitch in the jungle in the meantime, but that is still 19 minutes into this game almost before Gambit get their first kill. And G-Rex just continually roll with that momentum, you know, they speed the game up, they say, you want to go aggressive, we can certainly fight fire with fire, you use so much in that bottom lane assault. We're going to rotate it from bottom to mid lane, they take down all three outers. And you know, this is just Koala playing on the edge of aggression. He just walks forward time and time again. They're like, they're not going to dive the double tanks. Well, unfortunately, that is exactly what they plan to do. Stitch, cheats, goes the wrong way through the jungle. They're the kind of mistakes that later on in this tournament may punish G-Rex, but in this game right now, they just look like in such firm control. Five and a half thousand gold in 19 minutes is one hell of a lead, my yeah. friend. That is not something that you're just going to have to barely consider. I mean, for the side of Gambit, we're past the point of staunching bleeding. We're in full-on recovery. This team has got to find some way to turtle up and make it so they can force some more mistakes out of G-Rex because you can't fight this squad in open ground right now. They're so far ahead. Look at the itemization. Adaptive Helm, Black Cleaver on the top lane. Righteous Glory almost done for Skarner. Luden's Echo completed there in the mid lane for Candy. Working on that next item with the Blasting Wand. Rage Blade plus Orc for Stitch means what you were talking about. If that CC is not dialed in, your whole team's gonna look like pin cushions. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, the ability to just kite this lineup out, they are the one and done, you know. Stayhurst gonna throw the ultimate, Diamond's gonna fly in there, but with the current items that are picked up, no one is dying. Lodok is nowhere near the point he needs to be to be able to shred the tanky front line of PK, of Koala, and Empty. 
So really now you're looking at what cheeky vision can we get out? Yeah. How do we see when they go for that Baron play? How do we punish the neutral objectives while trying to get side late farm onto the carries that need to be there in the late game? Would it be to see surprise to see Kira fall even further behind and Lodic start taking his farm? Because this is an area that potentially Gambit is in trouble with. Gambit decided to make the call to go for Drake number two, but PK has found his way into the side of the fight, looking to grab some damage down on Akira, who is going to be taken decently low here, loses about one quarter of the HP. Koala goes in, play to stop the charge. Empty goes over the wall, still going to make some kind of a play here. Gambit still could turn this one around. The Ord Horde comes through! as Koala will be saved by the ultimate from the Kalista. G-Rex lose the Drake and they lose their top laner. Those are the kind of mistakes that Gambit needs to punish and they find them. Yeah, the easiest way to win a fight when you're 5,000 gold behind is if they don't bring everyone on their team to that fight. And you can see right there that Kanda, uh, Candy was absolutely nowhere near it. And I think that, you know, that's an overextension. That is a play that Gambit can look to continually punish. What could be on here? No, uh, go no, for it. No, just getting himself out. Yeah, that, that last play, I mean, the enemy team's in the Drake pit. You're far ahead. PK's like, all right, we're going in. We got him. But it doesn't quite work out. Yeah, and unfortunately, Kira does no damage. He doesn't even get through the shield <laughs> of the Urgot there. But this is the overextension. You know, without flashes available, you're not going to be able to get onto the back line. They funnel into this choke. Lodic right now is just free hitting. And if this had have been slightly further to the right, you know, that's potential to catch Stitch, to be able to get onto Empty. And that team fight could have actually been worse for the G-Rex lineup, so have to kind of count how lucky they were on the back end of that. want to comment again on the itemization here, because Candy's finished item number two, but it's not what you typically see. It is a Void Staff, which remember, the changes to MR itemization that happened, not recently at this point, but the most recent ones is, oh! Just delete him right out of the game, why don't you? Empty, grabbing himself kill number three this game, but Candy wants to make sure that even if he's having to put damage into the guys on the front line, like Steos or Edward, it punches through. And when you've got damage like that, it's gonna punch through. It certainly is, and uh, now all of a sudden Steos in the bottom lane, gonna try and save this turret. I don't think it's gonna work. No. I think that too many times we've seen Gambit <laughs> look for opportunistic plays that are just going nowhere. And uh, this is gonna be an interesting fight. The bonk noises as he does 50 HP damage to Urgot every time were thematically appropriate there. As PK now has to find a way out of this one because backup is coming. Even if Steos doesn't have the ability to take this Urgot down very effectively, Lodic does. Ornhorn gets sounded. There's the part that they need. That second hit connect as PK is going to be taken down. Kill number two over the 80 carry of Gambit. But G Rex has decided they're going to go for the bear. And remember, they are in a 4v5 if this fight breaks go. down all the way. Empty's in some trouble. Going to be knocked back into the rest of the team. Kira's going to suppress him further. Even so, now, as Edward tries to go forward, he's going to be CC'd, brought down. Skarner pull, make sure of that one. Steos into the back line. Koala absorbing the damage by the reset. And carry. The resets come in. Lodic goes forward. It's shut down for Kira. Empty's going to be targeted next. Lodic looking to grab the damage onto Candy. Not looking away, does the flash, finds the devil kill for his mid laner, and Gambit Esports have found their fight! And G-Rex thought they had the Baron, but they did not consider the two teleports, both Lodic as well as Stehos, able to make it to the fight, now pressure is on empty to be able to steal away this Baron. I like what Lodic did there, hop over the wall, pop the plant, go right back, PK's alive though. Wants to come in and keep them off this Baron. Health bars are low, mana bars are low, but there's still tools to be used here for Gambit. Can they manage to make this happen? Steos, good job using the stasis there to keep himself away from the Urgot ultimate. DK likely gonna be taken down here, one versus five, not really a number you wanna find yourself in too often but he buys enough time to keep Baron away from Gambit. He did his job. Yeah, absolutely, and they maintain the 5,000 gold lead. So whilst you make the monumental error of, you know, starting up the objective whilst the teleports are available and getting cleaned up in the team fight, this was very nicely played by Diamond Prox. That is a perfect cast. Edward, unfortunately, missing the hook meant that the ultimate had to be used onto empty, but still the aggression out of the veteran players, you know, Stehos getting onto the back line with three members putting damage into him. 
that's not where G-Rex wants to be at at this stage of the game with fights. And the target prioritization was also just really nice. You know, you're not going to be able to kill empty. Let that guy go. Focus on the mid laner. And the kills went where they needed to. Now you've got a 3-0-3 Tristana. Now you've got a couple of kills on Takira. And the game looks a little bit more doable now. The game looks playable now from the side of Gambit, where previously it was looking like, a, all right, everybody just center their turrets, hope that they mess up. It's still a pretty big gold lead. I mean, I'm not going to try to lie about that one. It's 4,000 gold down, 26 minutes. You're still on the back foot. But when you show that you can fight like that, and when your opponents equally importantly show that they will put themselves in compromisable positions, if Gambit can keep collapsing on that, if Gambit can keep playing to their experience, keep a cool head, and wait for those punish opportunities, they can still win this game. Yeah, and the only person they need to actually have goal is Lottie. As long as he can shred through the lineup, they're in a situation where they can win team fights because it is not the best tank shredding lineup on the G-Rex team. Callista historically has struggled against tanks unless the fight goes for a very long time. Syndra sucks against tanks. You know, she wants to be assassinating Squishies, so... Wadic is the member that they need to be able to keep safe and need to be able to get gold into. At the same time, PK does have that Urgot ultimate, which is sort of like a Cho'Gath ultimate, and that if you are going to fight front to back, it's good for blasting the biggest yep. meatball on the enemy team in Stahos and trying to get rid of him a little bit faster. G-Rex will need to do something with this gold lead, though, before we do scale to the point of a six-item Tristana. Two and a half already complete for Lodic. Let's see how this fight breaks out. Hornhorn not going to find a whole lot of success Ooh. just yet. On to the front line they go. Scarner suppression going to pull Stahos away. Goes into the Gargoyle Stone Plate. Going to take the Lantern now. Looking to get himself out. Koala over the wall. Able to find something. Able to find some control. As PK puts him in the grinder. And we're off to the races as G-Rex finds two. And another confusing decision coming out from Gambit. It looked like they had just regained some semblance of control. You know, they had teleport advantage on Kira. But instead, they choose to group up one more time. They give over two kills and now Baron is the objective. G-Rex Baron, second time's the charm, or is it? Gambit still have three members to try to stop this one with. Koala could be in some trouble, is going to be taken low, does not have Alistair ultimate. Lodic goes on a rampage, taking him down. Diamond over the wall, are you the hero of the day? He goes in early, it's going to be secured by Kalista. Lodic wants to find the kill, grabs one onto Candy, still looking to finish off even more. Stitch grabs the damage down, now onto him. Hero's already shut down as Empty grabs that shutdown onto Lodic as well. It's G-Rex winning the fight and taking the Baron. And the hardest champion to outsmite is going to be the Callista. So many spears put into that Baron with the Rage Blade as well. You know, interesting decision to go for the steal and not just the fight. If Diamond had have regrouped with the team, could have been different. But this is the questionable situation that started it all off. You know, they yeah. throw the ultimate at Stitch, the only flashless member of the lineup with his support, but they're just not able to get anywhere near him. And as you mentioned, even though Steos is tanky, that has secure damage that comes through underneath 25%, rips him back in, PK gets a very nice fear here and continues the chase. There's a reason Urgot is so powerful in the current meta and it just plays like that. And here you go, Gambit jumping in, trying to make something happen at Baron. Yeah, you get the support. Well, this is a confusing bit. It's Diamond goes over and looks for the steal. Versus Callista. Versus Callista. Whereas if he had to cut off that choke point, you know, Stitch not able to jump forward, potentially they can look to just team fight that one, but went for the all or nothing play and got nothing, unfortunately. Honestly, the whole fight from the very beginning just spelled out greed is a deadly sin to me because Gambit felt so greedy with that engage, saying, all right, we won the last fight. We're gonna sound the Ornhorn horn from two miles away and try to hit Callista. It just doesn't work that way. You've gotta play to how you're winning the fights and that dire mistake from Gambit now puts them at a point where they're down 7,000 gold, where G-Rex has Baron and they're pushing. How much is two miles in non-freedom units? Kilometers, uh, you know, like the rest of the world? Uh, I can try to figure that out after <laughs> this push is done because I only measure things in freedom units. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long way away to sound the order. There we go. That one, you know, just a little bit confused. As I <laughs> gambit right now, getting pulled all over the map. This Baron buff starting to put in some work. All right, Gambit have got their work cut out for them, man. It is hard to defend against a lead this big, against a Baron buff on multiple enemy members. Mid lane tier two still standing. The last turret outside of the base to do so for Gambit, but 
It won't be that way for long. Damage comes through. Koala goes forward just to zone everybody else out. Empty decides to pop the Righteous Glory just to see if maybe somebody's gonna step up too They're far. They're again. There goes the Horn, finds its way onto some of the tanks. Depression down on a PK, that's not the guy you need. Diamond Proc's barely getting himself out. Steyo's gonna be pulled back by the Scar Neralti. PK's got the fear and the execution as Gambit falls apart. Five still alive for G-Rex, and the push continues. And this guy on Ergon is an absolute monster. Time and time again, the fear has been there, and PK carrying G-Rex in these team fights. The TP brings him right back into what could very well be the game-winning push. 20 seconds left before Edward and Diamond Prox can re rejoin the fight. It's Kira and Lodic versus the world, but the world is looking pretty damn formidable right now. G-Rex collapsing onto that second Nexus turret. They do decide it's time to back. They won't go for the win here. Yeah, and I mean, that's disciplined play. They take one of the base turrets. They're not able to knock down the victory, so they take the tempo reset. They're gonna be back on the map at the same time as the Gambit lineup because Stehos still isn't up. And this team fighting is so confusing from Gambit. You know, the base isn't broken yet. You still have scaling through the Tristana, but they move forward. And you can see how devastating Koala has been on this Alistar. Couple it with the fact that PK is willing to burn the flash aggressively, gets the three four-man fear. And they just don't do enough damage to the front line at this stage of the game. These long-range Ornn ultimates aren't doing it. They aren't finding it. I looked it up, by the way. Two miles is 3.2 kilometers. There we so, go. It's a long way. For all of you who are not watching from America, you get a better idea of what I'm talking about now. <laughs> As Gambit, they have to realize that what they're talking about is a situation where they're down 11,500 gold where your opponents are now in control of every element of the game, and you have to find a way to defend these remaining two lanes. One inhibitor is already down. The remaining two inhibitor turrets still stand, so it's not in that part where you can't ever leave your base no matter what anymore, but it's very close. Because honestly, Lodic is like the combination of The Last Whisper away from making this game a doable game. Yeah, he's late game Triss. Yeah, he's nearly at, you know, five items at this stage of the game. He is 4-1-4. and four. He is positioned rather successfully throughout the team fights. I think eventually you have to just give the young man enough respect to say, you know, if he gets the five, six items, he will start winning these team fights for us. Let's take the big breath. There was nothing on the map to really take at that stage for G-Rex. It was going right. to be a reset. They chased them out of the base. You can see Kira on the Malzahar. Void Staff completed on him as the third major item. He's recognizing the fact, hey, I don't really get to do damage to either of these carries at all whatsoever. I kind of just have to deal with these big meatballs in the front. Might as well make that a little bit easier to do as the Warmogs completed for Diamond Prox means that he'll be able to take some poke if he manages to absorb some of that from Candy or Stitch as time goes on. He'll weather that storm and get rid of that damage so it doesn't stick quite as well. QSSs on the two frontliners to the side of Gambit, making sure that Empty can't get an easy pull onto him. Because when you're down 11,000 gold, your frontliners aren't really that durable. And Skarner yeah. can sort of just grab anybody he wants, and they're making sure that doesn't happen. Especially with how far they're overextending to get the engaged. Yeah. So if you overextend, then Skarner takes you back, you know, another half a screen. Then you're just in so much trouble because you're not tanky enough, as you mentioned. You know, you've got yourself the Syndra that's moving towards the Death Cap. You've got yourself, you know, the five item Callista, who at this stage of the game is starting to do some very relevant damage, probably gonna work on the Last Whisper herself for that final item. And Stitch has had a fairly impressive performance so far, but really it has been Empty and PK, that front line that we're talking about, that have done the majority of the heavy lifting. I mean, Empty's had a phenomenal game, five, zero, and seven. He has 80% kill participation and hasn't died once on a pure front liner. That's a very impressive showing from him here in this game. And, and as we said, playing Skarner against, you know, the likes of the Gragas and the Thresh that are so good at body blocking, so good at keeping you away. Yeah. Is an impressive game so far. Skarner versus Gragas is someone who has played a lot of that matchup can be very frustrating. The champion's got a lot of ways to keep you out. And or to actually just take you further back in. Yeah. You have to access a line, he just casts you away. Now they have to team fight when they're 10,000 gold down. 
G-Rex says, all right, here's where it's gonna be. This is the fight. PK goes into Gargoyle Stoneplay. Diamond Prox in the front, immediately destroyed as Stitch goes on a killing spree. G-Rex still looking to take this one even further. Empty on the front line, still gonna be shielded up. Stitch may be in some trouble for now. Steos goes in, looking to start this one off. Lodic's gonna be untouched for now. Still trying to get himself out, but he gets bursted down. And everybody's dead on Gambit. A double kill over to the side of the mid laner for G-Rex. And Empty is having a godlike performance. Flashes in, gets his man in Lodic, and is only Kira alive. He will take himself a risk, Scuttler, but he will ultimately lose this game. I feel like I jinxed it. As soon as I say Lodic's untouched, he immediately just gets deleted. And there's no way out for the AD carry or for the team of Gambit. They will not find their success here in game number one. Instead, it's G-Rex who gets denied by an, gets denied inhibitor. By an inhibitor respawn, but give me just a couple seconds here, <laughs> and we're gonna get right back on the hype wagon as LMS's third seed finds their first win in the second game of Worlds 2018. <laughs> uh, and a pretty commanding performance out of G-Rex. Yes, they won all three lanes. They were able to have very good control over how that game was pathing. And I think, you know, some desperation plays out of Gambit maybe sooner than I would have liked to have seen them. But G-Rex, all compliments to them, caught every one of those plays and were able to turn them around. You know, there was one iffy Baron. Yeah, but apart from that one mistake, this team looked very good. The Baron was throwy, but honestly, they controlled the early game so well. Going back to what we were talking about with the experience on Gambit, how these guys, some of them have been around for a very, very long time, going up against a team in G-Rex that literally joined the LMS at the beginning of this competitive year. They've got all these new players here on the world stage. We talked about realizing the gravity of the situation as you sit down in Law Park and you realize, hey, this is the biggest that it gets. We're here right now. And then to come in and just smash those experienced players in lane and take control of everything, phenomenal job from them. Yeah, because in traditional sport, it's just called the fishbowl effect, right? When you yeah. play in the middle of an arena and you sit down and you look up and everyone is looking at you, like all eyes on you for the first time, and you're playing against people that you probably sat down when you were starting League of Legends and were like, hey, I want to be like Diamond Prox. Yeah. I want to be like That's Edward. That's the guy right That's there. That's the guy right there that I'm trying to emulate. I mean, you got to give so much praise to this G-Rex lineup because they have had such an up and down season to be able to come to the first game of Worlds against probably your biggest opponent in this group and have such a statement early game is very impressive. And momentum, when you've only got four games to play yeah. in groups, can take you a long way. G-Rex has to be feeling good about that one. And for more on the game, let's hear from our friends at the Analyst Desk. Thank you very much, guys. Now, uh, as far as surprises go and not really knowing what to expect from each team, I think we booked our first big surprise, at least for me. I did not know what to expect exactly from G-Rex, and the fact that they play so confidently, play so strong in this early game, caught me off guard. Yeah, so dominating just based off that mid lane pressure from Candy. So already what we're seeing from G-Rex really dominating and good pressure from empty. I thought they really had it down pack. Yeah, I agree. And that's why I just straight off the bat want to announce our MasterCard player of the game in empty. Uh, he really was the catalyst for so much of that dominant early game. Right, you have three winning lanes. You're really just looking to track the enemy jungler and that's exactly what he did. He stopped a bunch of potential aggression on the boss side, finds Diamond here to set up for the rest of his team. And you know, they are working well together. Koala flashing in for the Ignite to find that kill, but all this is keying off empty. Uh, and turning that into the mid lane as well. So once they are able to find a bunch of kills from him, they start grabbing all the turrets, and the, the early game lead they built was completely off his back. Uh -huh. Exactly. The only mark that I had for him is that he wasn't in the er enemy jungle for the Raptors when it first spawned, because Candy was doing so good of a job in the early game in the mid game. Six, level six pings, those mid repeatedly. The cap was paying off, and so the mid lane pressure was a lot reason why the catalyst is moving forward. So and I like pressure. I like for G-Rex that they kind of went off what they've shown in the gauntlet. In the regular season in the LMS, they weren't doing too hot in the early game. They weren't really an early game team to be reckoned with. But in the gauntlet, they completely turned that around. They had the most kills in that set 15 minutes. They had the highest goal difference at 15 out of anyone in the LMS gauntlet. And I love that that is what they chose to do because I think it's really valuable in the best of one scenarios in planes. Yeah, value your laners. We're seeing a lot more candy. He, the reason why... Candy's coming in, no Wuji to be seen, mm -hmm. is because he's that talented. So that being said, bottom lane meta is coming back. So now Stitch is back in action. And PK as a player, this is what I love, because spring split, summer split, split pushing top laner. 
but then he's really needed to join the team a little bit more, roaming from the top lane to the mid lane. That's how they got the flash on to Malzahar earlier on. So PK is a standout performer. Yeah, and just talking about some of the bot lane stuff in particular, there was a ton of AD carry and uh, support bands in the bot side yes. that kind of forced this Callista and Thresh to come out. Uh, the Thresh is not as effective as I mean, I think best. we just have to take a minute. I do not like, uh, you know, completely beating up players, but I think Edward is one of the guys with the most experience we were looking at. He picks the Thresh, and he did miss a lot of important hooks, so that's something they have to do. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, I don't think I remember a single important hook that yeah. he landed. There are a number of team fights that started with his hook whiffing, and that's a pretty big and problem. And flashing with the box. Yeah, <laughs> so like, I think that was a big problem for them, but G-Rex picking three winning lanes, picking a jungler that can go control the other one was a very nice game plan out of them, uh, but it wasn't all easy. For yeah, that's what I kind of want to jump in. We had kind of a, a difference of opinion. I think for a first game, they did really well in their early game leads and whatnot. You think G-Rex and the team fights did not look as clean by far as you would want them. I think they had a great early game. I agree on that. But looking forward for this team, I am a little concerned that you had all these kills start going back and feeding into a Tristana. Yeah. And if you had Edward playing better, maybe not on Thrash, or Diamond not getting shut down so hard in the uh -huh. early game, Plays like this could have really hurt them. And yeah, here's a big problem for me, because Diamond Prox, he has himself uh, a lot of like HP. He's had the HP pull on the Warmogs. And we have a redemption on the Thresh. They're getting blown up. There's no real front line for Lodic to be able to However, this is one they managed to turn around. Right, and I think this is why I was worried, because yeah. Lodic starts getting really large here. And to Raz's point, the problem was they never had the tools around the Tristana. There was no Knight's Vows going on to, to him. There was no resist being built, so the, the Syndra always had a target. Yeah, that was my issue ultimately. These are longer fights that you have to play through. The fact that Lodic wasn't given the space to perform here was a major turn. Now, uh, that being said, good indicator for the next game is that you can play around bot side a little bit more heavily. These early game mistakes are something you can kind of deal with with the draft, but maybe try to focus on the team fights because that was messing up uh, G-Rex. So Shane, for G-Rex, it was messing them up. Do you think this is a positive sign for Gambit that they were able to fight back? Well, unfortunately, they were in a major goal deficit, but did you see positive and hopeful signs in their team fighting later in the game? Yeah, team fights are strong. So ultimately, the big point is Take those team fights. I want to see a tankier build out of the trash. Redemption is not the go to. Zeke's is a really good point. Nice vow, as you've already mentioned. So they have frontline that can move up. I can understand why Gragas mm -hmm. didn't have it because he just was that far behind in the game. But ultimately, I think that's something we should look towards for uh, Gambit. And I'm a little concerned just if people keep targeting Lodic because he was the only guy looking right there. I think uh, all the other members had a moment or two, but like they threw a million bands at him, forced yeah. him onto the Tristana so he couldn't carry until like four items. And at that point, the rest of the team had fallen that far behind. I want to see if Chaos Latin Gamers take a similar approach yes. when they go up against them because it did feel like a pretty good blueprint, all things considered. It there. could shape up to be a very interesting group when we look at that. Then uh, G-Rex, a good surprise, very first good game from them. And I think when we look at what we talked about at the top of the day, you have to finish top two here. So the first day dropping those games is not good for Gambit. They're going to need a win versus KLG later, and maybe G-Rex can go 2-0 today. Yeah, I think G-Rex are looking really good. <laughs> to that point, uh, it's always difficult with the amount of VODs that you get on a team's current performance. Running with empty, we didn't get that much of a chance to see them. I think the last series that we saw was very impressive. So just based off that alone, I think that LMS is actually fielding their second best team, much like Cloud9, in their play-in in play stage. So that's something we should track a little bit more to see if the team fighting can get better and if they can learn going forward, if they can get past this into the best of five. Promising signs. I mean, for the LMS, uh, as said already, it's always about those teams coming in behind the Flash Wolves to make their mark, because that's what we always talk about. And they've definitely made their mark in game one. Yeah, it's always been a criticism of them, and it was really played into last year when they failed to make it out of the play-in. So I think for the side here for G-Rex, they're really hungry to not be that you know, third place LMS team who comes yeah. up short again. And with that fantastic logo, I mean, wonderful that they picked up their <laughs> I first see more win. Of it. Yeah, we want to see more of it. Now we're going to take a quick break, but as we go to break, a reminder that Championship Kha'Zix and a whole host of world swag is available now. And if you're looking to show your support, pick up your team-specific chroma, which can include a loading screen border, special recall, and an emote that you can flash in-game. Go check that out. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, it'll be Game 3, Detonation Focus Me versus Kaboom.
G-Rex. Kira could be in some trouble here. Empty goes to the flash, into the pole, into the damage, into the ult, into the kill. Koala absorbing the damage by the resets. Any carry. The resets come in. Lodic goes forward. It's shut down for Kira. Empty's going to be targeted next. Lodic looking to grab the damage onto Candy. Not looking away. Does the flash. Finds the double kill for his mid laner. Goes into the gargoyle. Stone play. Going to take the lantern now. Looking to get himself out. Koala over the wall. Able to find something. Able to find some control. As PK puts him in the grinder. And we're off to the races as G-Rex finds two. Steos goes in, looking to start this one off. Lodic's going to be untouched for now. Still trying to get himself out, but he gets bursted down. And everybody's dead on Gambit. A double kill over to the side of the mid laner for G-Rex. G-Rex, who gets denied by an, gets denied by an inhibitor respawn. But give me just a couple seconds here. <laughs> we're going to get right back on the hype wagon as LMS's third seed finds their first win in the second game of Worlds 2018.